just looking at my Ender 3. Um, so the lighting's not the best. So I'm going to fix this a little bit. The um, I pulled the board out because I, I noticed that the there's a design flaw on this board. This is the CS10 board, right? Creality 3D version 1.1.2. Um, the it's got two connectors here for fans here and here, which would be okay, but they're in parallel. And what it does, it turns the fan off on the on the hot end here, it turns it on and off. And um, that's okay, but when that happens, it also turns off the fan which is on the box, the circuit board's in, which needs cooling continuously, which is kind of dumb, really. So I'm going to modify this circuitry and um, make it so that fan stays on all the time. But when I pulled it all apart, I found here, look, if you can see it on camera or not, hopefully you can, and I get the bloody thing right. Anyway, just here. Those are the power connectors for the main system come in, right? The main power come in. They are broken. This connector is just wobbling around, look. See it? Wobbling. Those two joints are both broken. Awesome. Don't you love lead free solder? So, we're working on this board here, just trying to fix it up a bit more. And I've noticed a couple of issues with it. <coughs> now, it's documented at C4. It's apparently the wrong value. It doesn't. Um, it causes issues with print quality, and it needs to be. It's recommended to replace that to a 220 UF. Well, I'm looking at this design, and it's like, well, you've got the main supply comes through. It goes all the way down this track, and it's right into the track there. So I don't so much think it's more of a case of the capacitor being inadequate. I think it's more of a case of the track cannot pass enough current. So what I've done is I've, sh I've just shut the jumper wire across there um, to get power to the end of the track. Um, because it's got three holes tying onto those capacitors just there. So I think that's actually what the issue is there. Now, the other thing I noticed is that the zero volt here, as you can see I've already repaired this, it's all broken away. Um, it passes through here, right? So it's the track. If you look closely here at this hole, you'll see the track is actually cut through both sides. There's no conductivity there. So it must be relying on the, on the wires and, and these other little traces all the way through the ball to try and get that through. So what I've done is put a little jump on here as well just to help that get through as well. Just to help the current get through. So it's bound to help it, isn't it? Can't make it any worse. Now, the next thing I was looking at, this is the one I was suspicious of. I actually need to glue the proper heatsink back on this actually. Um, I've got some stuff here somewhere which I've now lost stuff. Um, so a bit of handheld, I'm just doing some bench stuff and it's not easy. Now the reason I'm doing handheld you'll see the second you see there's a MOSFET right there only half underneath that heatsink. I've got one there just underneath as well. And I've just got it you know centered-ish. It's okay you can see the adhesive sticking out that side, that side there that's just fine. Look at the side you don't see any adhesive. If I bring this up you can see the adhesive stops before the MOSFET. There's actually a gap you see that gap there? The end MOSFET isn't being cooled at all. There's actually a gap between it and the heatsink. So I'm going to take this heatsink off and, and glue it back down again. So there you go, I've got the heatsink off. And as you can see, there's no thermal compound at all in that in MOSFET. That wasn't getting it cooled. So that might explain why I was getting some weird issues with my printing. Um, it go wacky. I'll show you what I've got. I was trying to print this handle out and it's just gone to hell. All right, it's actually stepped in and out like this. I wonder if the MOSFET was shutting down. Um, yeah, this is supposed to be a nice solid block and it's just really not. I don't know why it's printing weird, so I ended up giving up that print. I just left it and said, I just wanted to see how long it went for and what issues came up. And um, I was having all kinds of weird little issues with it, so um, yeah, I believe that that's not helping. The other thing I noticed is that it's, you've got two fan connectors here, um, just there, fan and fan one. What I want to do is wire up the main internal fan, which happens to be a 24 volt fan anyway, as you can see. And I want to wire that straight across the supply and just have it running, running all the time. You don't want it to overheat, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I've glued the heatsink back on again. What I've actually done is I've got a adhesive heatsink stuck that onto the end, and um, I've glued. So I've actually moved it along a little bit. 
So it's now completely covering the MOSFETs um, and it, the whole thing is glued all the way down um, across the top of the MOSFET. So they're definitely all definitely going to get cooling now. I've glued, glued that heat sink there back on in that one as well. Um, so let's see how we go. Um, it's definitely an improvement. Now the next thing I've got to consider is this fan this issue where the fan is shutting off for the time. Because it's a switch circuitry. I'm not quite sure if it's really meant to be. Um, so I'm going to look at that next and see what we can do about that. Right, so I've just done some probing around in here. Let's try and rest this camera so it's a, bit, a, little bit, a little bit less wobbly. Now, if you look really carefully here, you see the tracks I see pulled back from that pin as well. So these two pins are in parallel. Um, and they go straight to the main 24 volt supply here. Okay, which is fine. So the negatives are, are linked together and they go to this pad, which is also the hot end system. Okay, so that's all through that MOSFET stuff and whatever you just there. So those are actually being switched. So what I'm going to do, I could try um, cutting the trace to one of these, probably this one here. Cut the trace to that, see if it then becomes isolated. Um, if it does, then um, I can, well, I'll run a bridge from there to here, because that's a negative there. Right, that's negative supply here. So if I run a bridge from there to there, that will then mean that fan will stay on all the time, which is what I want. You can see I've cut the track there now, and I've checked continuity, and there's no, no longer a connection between that pen and this pad here. So that's definitely fine now. So I'm just going to run a link to the ground, and that mean that fan will run all the time now. So this is what I have to do to uh, 3D printer in order to keep the ABS working okay. To cover it up, um, try and keep the heat in. ABS doesn't like to get too cold, so um, you know we're trying to um, process it in this way. It helps them to adhere to each other in the streams and stuff on the camp on the um, on the nozzle. So when it's actually coming out, it's coming out better. Now I'll show you something here. Here's a couple of examples. It's not the handheld, but no, it is what it is. Now. This is a handle I've designed for the Valhalla 2703. Okay, only it didn't print properly. It went all wacky. It's, it's all stepped. Come on, focus on that. See, it's all stepped, and um, it shouldn't be stepped like that. You see, it's all just all over the place, and it's even gone sideways as well. And the actual appearance on the front is just not very good. Get us into focus on it. All right, so it's very rough. So I did some work on the electronics, which I've also videoed, which I'll insert before, after this. I'm not sure. And the result I've got now is much better. Okay, so you can see it's not played up now. That's all okay. No, it's not perfect alignment. Try and get us to focus on it. Come on. Okay. So the alignment's not too bad there. You know, it's it's a lot better than that one was. That one is awful. So um, yeah, and it's a lot smoother. But it's not perfect. It's not as good as the first print I got off this thing. But um, that is a really small item. This is a large item, so it's a bit different. So. Um, what is happening is the electronics are overheating, so I've done some work to repair that and uh, make it better. So, so that's just a before and after. Um, I did modify the design this very slightly, made it slightly thinner and shortened the handle a little bit so I use a little bit less filament. After I printed this one, I thought, oh no, it's massive, I can bring it down a bit. And what I'm printing now is even smaller again. I'm just refining the design a little bit. I'm also printing in black now because I think I'm going to be pretty close to getting right. Um, what I've also done is I've, um, in this print I'm doing now, is I'm uh, reduced the print speed, going slower, gives more time for the filament to heat up, which should help it to um, become more sticky. That's the plan anyway. So I thought I'd show you that. So um, that's that bloody bridging on the bottom there. So when it's doing graphs, you know, because that's actually not on the bed, it's suspended. 
so he has to do some rafting on there to make that work and it's a little bit rough on the vehicles of it. That's normal, it's fine. So yeah, um, so I thought I'd show you the difference between before and after. So then that's modifications because I mean this was just going all over the place, it's just completely wacky. You know, really, really wrong. As you can see, it's just completely wrong. Um, yeah, so I think I actually did the same kind of thing when I did my first prints. Um, I'll get you these. So these are the first ones I did in blue. And it started to melt at the top. It's doing okay. You can see it's going to go halfway up and then it started to play up. You can see the, the surface finish. Let's get closer. Come on. Oh, come on, focus. Here we go. Right, so you can see it's got a fairly smooth surface at the bottom part. Then it gets rough. And that's when it started playing up and, um, yeah, just didn't work very well. I think it was uh, overheating a little bit. There's another one which I made which went a lot better. Um, that one broke when I was trying to assemble it, so that was no good. Uh, yeah. That's right. Um, it's a nice little toy, I suppose. It's in there making something, so I'm picking. In there. Yeah. Making another one right now. Maybe. Just. Yeah. So yeah, it's going. Uh, let's see how we go with that. So my little uh, Ender 3 printer here, um, I had an issue with the main ball when I first got it. It wouldn't feed any filament through. And that's controlled by um, this MOSFET right here. Let's just zoom in. So this MOSFET right here is the one which controls that uh, feeder. I think it's E. It's called E. Right? Um, and it just didn't want to know. So I've got all of Banggood. So look, you know, this board has obviously got a fault. It's um, not feeding. So they, they sent me another one, which is great. So that is not that is all fine. So I've got to replace the board. You can actually buy the balls on Banggood. So they're $40 US to buy them. So if you do have a bad board, you can you know do that. Now, I'll actually do some full-up video later on um, once I've get the you know, other parts because the driver is dead. Um, so I've actually ordered some new driver chips. So um, I will when it, when they turn up, I'll do I'll probably do a little video or something, maybe showing it. I don't know. I might or may not. I'm, I, anyway, but that chip is bad. There's a tiny little chip underneath there, and you see it's got a glued-on heatsink, and um, that is bad. So I've um, Ordered some more chips. You can get them. The it's an A four nine eight eight is the actual part number. So they're available. Um, and um, so I can repair the board. So I, that will actually give me a spare board now. So yeah, that's what I show it. But the 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 thing is purchasable. You can buy the boards. Um, now they say twelve volt, but if you look at the design, this is exactly the same board as in my end of three which runs with 24 volts and if you look at the design a little bit I mean, it's, there's nothing different between this board and one that's in my unit they, they look identical um, so it's right you know it's, it's fine um, it's got this little step down circuitry on here to run the 5 volt barrels and it's all right so I'm assuming 5 volt I don't actually measure it so that's just 12 volts it will run off a 24 volt supply so, anyway I'll sort of show you that Okay, I think that's enough of me waffling. That's all I've got to say about that. So thank you, Banggood, for supporting me and sending me a new ball to replace the one which is in this unit, which turned out to have a fault. Um, yeah, I will fix that. It's probably just been a bad driver. It's probably a slightly weak driver or something that's just failed. Yeah.